Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm very excited to announce that I'll be making a series of tutorials on a Python framework called LangChain. So what exactly is LangChain? It's a powerful framework for interacting with language models such as ChatGPT. And we can use LangChain to build applications powered by large language models in Python. And what that really means is ChatGPT being the engine and the land chain will act as a layer on top of the engine that will actually do something that's useful with large language models. I'm not saying that chat GPT is not useful, but by integrating with land chain, you can build much, much more powerful applications. We know that we can use our large language models such as chat GPT to generate natural languages and also code. However, chat GPT cannot run the code. When we integrate with land chain, you can actually use chat GPT to generate the code and land will actually execute that code for you. Basically, we can use large language models to operate our computers. The LangChain framework is very new. It first appeared on GitHub around mid-January 2023. By today, which is April 6, it's already collected 21,000 stars. I want to mention that the LangChain framework can work with various language models and ChatGPT is just one of them. I think it's also possible to use LangChain to work with local language models such as the Alpaca Llama. And in this series, we'll be just focusing on how to integrate LangChain with ChatGPT. Because we're using ChatGPT as the language model, so we need to get access. The way to do it is you have to come to the OpenAI website and just register a free account. Once you're inside your account, come to view API keys and you will be on this page. You can create a new secret API key. Click on this and make sure that you copy the key before you click on the OK, because as soon as you click on OK, your key will disappear and then you will not be able to see it again. If you lose your key, you can always come back to this page and uh, just create a new key. So I'm going to delete this key because I just showed it to you guys. Always good to keep your key secret, right? It seems like it depends on your location. You get different credit amounts. So for me, I'm based in Canada. Uh, so upon registering this free account, I got $5 a credit but I heard some people get like $18, which is good for you. Let's get started with coding. I'm going to install three Python libraries. I've already installed everything, so it won't, it won't do anything on my environment. And before we start, I, I want to show you the setup. I have my Python script, the Python code stored here. And because I do not want to store my API keys inside the script, so I use the python.env library. And the way to use it is that within the same folder, you have to create another file called .env. So essentially this file doesn't have a name and it's just a .env extension file. And to show you what the file looks like, I've already taken out the API keys from here. So you have some sort of key and value pair inside this file. And then as long as you have this file, you can use the python.env library to load all these keys securely into your script without exposing them. Okay, I think that's enough of introduction and let me show you what you can achieve using the LangChain framework. So this will be an overview and I just want to talk about the possibilities with LangChain. We will be working through a lot of the details in later tutorials. So first of all, let's look at the language model. And in this example, because we're using the OpenAI as the provider, so here we're importing OpenAI. So let's run that. I am building our large language model using the OpenAI provider and I'm specifying that I want to use the ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo model. We are essentially um, sending this query to ChatGPT through API and this is the response from ChatGPT. So this is one way that you can interact with the chat using LangChain. And the second way is through something called chat model. You will see the difference between uh, this large language model and the chat model. Uh, you can see right away that in the chat model API, so essentially we can pass something that's called a system message. It's kind of like you're telling ChatGPT how you want it to react to your questions. And in this case that we wanted to act as an expert Canadian uh, tour guide. And from now on, ChatGPT will answer the more questions as if it is a tour guide. This is a human message which comes from the user. So let's run that. So the response is actually an AI message. Most popular city is uh, Toronto. It's the largest city in Canada, blah, blah, blah. So this is the chat model. The next one I want to show you is the prompt template. So, so far we have been passing through queries uh, just in hard code values. 
oftentimes we don't want to be just passing hard code string queries to the language model and this is where the prompt template can uh, become handy so the prompt template kind of looks like uh, similar to the python f string and it basically allows us to plug variables into a string query and we can reconstruct different queries that way so we're going to import the prompt template from LangChain, and this is our uh, template string I mentioned that it looks like a Python F string in the sense that we want to use a set of curly brackets to wrap around the variable name, but notice that we don't include the F uh, for F string in front of the string. So we just want to keep it that way. And in the prompt template, we actually specify the input variable, which is country city that inside this set of curly brackets. And then we also pass this whole template uh, into the template variable here. Let me just run this. And now you can pass in different values uh, into this country city variable so that we can reconstruct new queries this way. So now my query becomes, I want you to act as a local tour guide Toronto, Canada. This is the response from ChatGPT. Uh, sure, I love to be your uh, tour guide for Toronto, Canada. And here are some of the top attractions for uh, Toronto. We all know that when talking to ChatGPT, it appears that ChatGPT can remember whatever we said within the same session. So we can do the same thing here using LandChain and we can basically add memory to the chat models and here is how we can do it. So essentially we are creating something called conversation buffer memory and then we can pass that as the memory argument inside this conversation chain. So inside this conversation chain I'm passing this large language model which is basically the same large language model that we created in this uh, very first example here. So I, I think I can comment out this and it will still work. And now we can communicate with ChatGPT. My name is Jay, what's your name? And as you can see here, because I had this conversation chain, I set the verbose variable to true. It's kind of like showing you uh, the AI's thought process. And it will also show you some of the pre prompt. So this is where the prompt engineering comes into place as green text here. It says uh, the following is a friendly conversation between human and AI, AI talkative and provide. So all these are, I didn't type this and the LandChain framework with this string as part of the prompt engineering to help chat GPT provide better answers to humans. This is my prompt. My name is Jay, what's your name? And the returned response. This is the response from chat GPT. And I'm going to follow up with Another question, uh, have you heard about Stable Diffusion? So Stable Diffusion is a text to image program that came late of 2022. So we know that ChatGPT was trained using the data before September 2021, I think. So it will not know what Stable Diffusion is. And I'll be surprised if it knows that. And it's also interesting that because we turned the verbose argument to true. So you can kind of see that it keeps a history of the conversation. And this is my first message to the AI. Actually, I told the AI that my name is Jay and I asked uh, for its name. So this is the response to my second question. Uh, stable diffusion is statistical concept. This is not what I was looking for. So apparently it doesn't know what stable diffusion is. And then my third query to the AI is, do you remember my name? So I think it will remember because it kept a chat history uh, in the conversation. So the AI responded with, yes, your name is Jay. Right. So that's how we can add memory to our chatbot. For now, we're not going to talk about the chains. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, how to feed the language model with custom information. The LandChain framework provides several document loaders to load documents or data from different sources. So for this one, we're going to use the text loader. We're also going to import the vector store index. So basically we are storing the information, the text into a vector and we can query that vector or that index. This text loader here will load this SD underscore wiki dot txt file. Let me show you what it looks like. So this is the text file. Basically, I just copied all the text from this wiki page and I stored inside this text file. And now we're loading it into Python. The previous question that I asked chat GPT was that, have you heard about stable diffusion? And the answer it gave is a statistical concept, which is not what we are looking for. So now we are feeding our model with some custom data that comes from the Wikipedia page. And let's now ask the same question again. Uh, what is stable diffusion? 
now it knows what stable diffusion is. Uh, it's a deep learning text -to image model released in 2022. Remember that I mentioned that ChatGPT was trained on data before September 2021. So this proves that we are able to train the ChatGPT using custom data. And we can ask other questions such as uh, what programming language is the stable diffusion program written in, which is written in Python, which is uh, correct. So I'm not going to run this last query here. Um, I hope you get the idea. So basically, this is how you can feed the language model using custom data. In this example here, we only used a text file, but you can use PDF, you can use spreadsheets, and the possibilities are unlimited at this point. So think about that. You have a huge document and you can train an AI to learn what's inside the document and you can just ask questions using natural language. Imagine that's what the future looks like. Next thing I want to cover is called agents. This is, in my opinion, the most powerful feature offered by Landchain. So agents are basically like bots. Essentially, what this means is we can use natural language to control a bot. So think about that. Instead of holding specific instructions, now we can just use, for example, like English to ask the bot to do to do something, basically. Let me run this and show you what that means. I'm importing the load tools and initialize agent. So this load tools function takes in a list of uh, strings, and these strings represent available tool names uh, to the engine agent. This SERP API, this is used for search. Basically, you can ask the bot or the agent to search on the internet. And this requests library, this is the Python requests library, which is also used to access the internet. And this is the same large language model that we created earlier. And this is just passing in the SERP API key. And this line, we're initializing the agent. We're giving this agent or the bot uh, these, two, these two tools to use. This agent equals to zero shot React description looks kind of nonsense at this point. There are a couple of different agents available for us, and this is kind of like a generic one. And the verbose equal to true, basically, by enabling the verbose, we can kind of see the thought process of the bot. Run this, um, essentially just creating the tools and then equipping the agent or the bot with the tools. And this is where it's getting crazy. So now I have this agent, I can ask the agent to do something on my behalf. And my question is, tell me what is Midjourney? So Midjourney is just another text to image model that's available. And I believe the original ChatGPT training set also didn't have Midjourney because Midjourney came after September 2021. And if we run this, you will see what I mean by crazy. So we can see the thought process of the agent. It's uh, saying that I'm not sure what Midjourney is, so I should probably search for it. And now this is searching on the internet. Um, it's looking for the Midjourney definition, and it found that Midjourney is uh, this artificial intelligence program. So I thought, oh, that's interesting, but I still don't know enough about it. I should see if there's a website with more information. And now it's using the request get because we enabled the bot with the request library. So it's able to request information from a web page. And it's actually able to guess the website good enough, uh, midjourney.com. And this is the HTML for that website. It actually didn't go through because of the token size. There are a lot of stuff on their websites. And with this model, the token size cannot be over 4,097 tokens. So that's why it failed. But imagine that you can actually ask the bot some question and then the bot will be able to search for it. And if it doesn't find anything, it will just search or crawl the open internet. So how crazy is that? Just have a minute to process this information. All right, that's the overview for the Landchain framework. I'll be doing more tutorials to cover a lot of the details about the Landchain framework in future tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.